A semantic gradient is a vocabulary strategy that asks kids to think about what they know about words. With semantic gradients, students examine the subtle differences between related words by laying them out on a continuum. The goals of this strategy are to help students develop their vocabulary, to extend what they know about words, and to help them think about relationships among similar words. Understanding these relationships will also help students become stronger readers and more descriptive writers. Watch now as Ms. Doyle works with her second grade students with a list of words all related to the word large. So yesterday we were talking, we, I read you this story called The Seed is Sleepy. Does everybody Teachers can use story? books students have already read and as a Sean, springboard this into this vocabulary you know, strategy. A little bit about this story. Can I show? It was talking about like it was talking about like big seeds or small seeds, and um, it was talking about, about the sunflower seeds. seeds. It was talking about the size of seeds. So I want to reread one of the pages to you. Seeds come in many sizes. This is the coco de mer seed. The seed of the coco de mer palm is the largest. It can weigh up to sixty pounds. Bella? I weigh 56 and that's only four and a half pounds. She weighs 56 pounds, so this seed is four more pounds than Bella. Can you imagine that? I want to show you some words. Let's read these words together. Miss Doyle has prepared a vocabulary Average. list related to her target word, large, ahead of time for the students. Large. But she could also have worked with the kids to develop the list. What kind of words are these? What title would we give these words? Size words. By arranging size these size words, words on a continuum of words, meaning, the students get a chance to expand their understanding of both words, new and really old vocabulary. So I'm going to give you a partner, and I'm also going to give you a strip. You are going to take these words, and they're going to be in a little clip like this, and you are going to start moving them around along this line. You and your partner together are going to decide what order these words would go in. The important thing you're doing with your partner is you're talking about where these words would go along a line. You're deciding together. You're explaining why. It's not about quickly gluing them in any order because there's not a perfectly right answer. Your partner might say, hey, wait a minute. I think massive is bigger than gigantic. I'm not sure what bulky is. Let's talk about bulky before we put it in any order on the line. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, Moya. Once the instructions and supplies have been handed out, allow the students to work independently, either in small groups or individually. It feels like it's in the middle to me. Tiny is kind of like, like this. Think of that. Like this. Tiny is like a freckle. Like a freckle like you know. I know, I have many. So tiny should go in there. And then microscopic, you can't even see it. So it's I like think a it virus goes to or a germ. Yeah, so it so it goes here. So it goes so at it the goes end. all at the end. Check in on students' no. progress and guide them when they get stuck or ask for help. So you guys were asking me about the words and telling me you're a little bit stuck. I have a couple questions for you. We're talking first about what you know for sure. Can you tell me what you know for yeah, sure? That enormous is the biggest one, so it goes all the way at the end. Okay. And tiny is the littlest one. Okay, so let's think about, do you first of all know what all of these words mean? Small means... Encourage students to discuss the subtle differences among the words and their rationale for how they arrange them on the continuum. Then tiny... Can you show it to me? Show me small. Like, so, so small is definitely or down like, here. Or like this glue stick is That's so small. small. So slide it down, you're sure about that. Is small bigger than tiny? Mm -hmm. Yes. Brian, do you agree? Is small bigger than tiny? Okay, so tiny's all the way down, then small. <coughs> What's average? I think average is like right in the middle. Average is right in the middle. Okay, so if you're looking at the strip, where do you think oh, average would go? I think go? we should put it in the middle. Maybe, like maybe just try it. Slide it over a little bit. We'll put it in the middle. So these are the ones we know for sure up here. Yeah. What about this word? Brian, read this word to me. Help your partner out. My what is this word? Microscopic. Microscopic. Do you know what microscopic means? I think it means like when you look inside of a microscope, there's something tiny in there 
You just and said something that's very key. What did you just say? When you look in a microscope, there's, there's something, something very tiny. tiny. So where do you think microscopic goes? Okay, tell me why. Because very tiny is smaller than the tiny. Very tiny is smaller than tiny. So if this is, let's put them on the, let's put them on the strip now. Wrap up the strategy sure. by coming together and, and discussing tiny. the activity. And then what about this one? So I wanted to talk to you about this process that we just went through, moving these words around. But first I want to give you a compliment. I thought the partnerships worked out really well. I heard kids talking to each other. I heard kids taking turns. I heard kids making decisions. And I definitely heard kids explaining their reasoning. And that's what we want you to do. So how does doing an activity like this, playing with words, vocabulary words, moving them around, how does that help you as a writer? Maya? So it's like um, when, you're, when you're like thinking of there's something big and you want to describe it and you can't really th think of something, maybe these words can help you. And they, and they can also help your reader to picture what you're writing about. Isaac? If you say this, the toilet is just plain small, that would be drab. That is kind of drab. Semantic gradients can be done with individual children. They could work in pairs, as you saw, in small groups, or as a whole class. Teachers could provide the anchor words for the ends of the continuum. Students could also generate the list of words based on something they've read or a unit of study. As another wrap-up, students could write a sentence with each word. They could draw an illustration. No matter how you use it, semantic gradients are a great addition to your vocabulary strategy repertoire.